Hey everyone, do prebiotics and probiotics break a fast? I'm Michael Bogdan, co-founder of Ford Fuel Sports Nutrition, and in today's video, we're going to test two probiotics and two prebiotics and measure glucose levels with a continuous glucose monitor to see whether they have any effect on our blood sugar, which might suggest that we're breaking our fast. If you're doing fasting, you know, you can use ketone strips and you can use glucose monitors to see where you are. But if we see a spike in our blood sugar, then we know that that's probably causing a break in our fast. I'm doing this on day three of a five day fast. And be sure to stick to the end where we'll be sharing six crucial tips to make a prolonged fast easier and more effective. All right, it's about seven in the morning and it is Wednesday. My last meal was Sunday night. So you know, I'm roughly about 61 hours into my fast. And the one thing I've had is water and electrolytes and some decaf Swiss press coffee. Um, but I'm gonna get into testing probiotics and prebiotics to see if they break a fast. You know, for my research, it hasn't. Um, I've used them in the past, but I've never had a continuous glucose monitor to really look into if it changes the glucose. So, um, you know, this morning I woke up around six. Um, things were a little bit crazy with my daughter. So after she was done screaming, I sat down for a little bit to try to make sure my glucose was steady. And you can see for about the past you know, half hour or so, it's been pretty steady. It's been probably around 66, 68 type range. So I have some of the things I'm trying today. Uh, one of our favorite probiotics, which is Megasporbiotic. Um, I'm gonna do some prebiotic fiber, which has five calories, but it's not digestible. Uh, we're not gonna use that one. Um, uh, pretty like enzymes, some manokinase, and just some basic inulin. We may go to that depending on how the numbers change, but you know, have enough in my system, within a half hour to an hour, we should see a change if it is going to break the fast. So here we are at 705, I'm doing two capsules. See if this breaks the fast. All right, well, things aren't going exactly as planned. Is it because I went up and took a shower? I don't know, but um, you can see with my continuous glucose monitor that you know maybe 20 minutes or so after taking the probiotic, there was a spike. But because I went upstairs and was in some hot water, it was because my daughter was being fussy and we had a little bit of a fun parenting moment. Um, not sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, give this some time and we're also gonna try the probiotic or the prebiotic fiber and we may try uh, pretty like enzyme and the probiotic tomorrow because you can see it's come back down to baseline. It's down to 66. Um, so maybe in another hour we'll try something else and see if we get a different result. All right, it's just a little bit after nine o'clock and my glucose levels have pretty much stabilized in the really high 60s, low 70s. So right now, we're at 72. So it's been two hours uh, since I took the probiotic. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna try the nanokinase uh, proteolytic enzyme. So last night I took this, but I didn't record the time. Or now I'm gonna take the proteolytic enzyme and we'll see. Does this have an effect on fasting? And does it break the fast or change my glucose level? So we'll closely monitor now, 905. I'm gonna make a, an event in my Super Sapiens app and we'll see what my glucose levels do. All right, it's now a little bit after 10 o'clock. So it's been a full hour, actually a full hour and five minutes since I took the proteolytic enzymes uh, from DaVinci and no change in blood glucose. So if this zooms in, I'll have some screenshots of this as well to see that over the hour, it's not changed pretty much at all. It's pretty much stayed within two, three points or so. So now the big test. The big test is gonna be 
going with some prebiotics. Uh, the prebiotics have uh, from uh, SFI, which is a combination of beta-glucan, uh, inulin, inulin, and some tart tree wood uh, polysaccharides. This has five grams of carbs. Uh, four of those are from fiber. So really it's just, there's one carb that can maybe uh, disturb your blood sugar, which is high on life. So we're gonna do this. And I think later I'm gonna retest the probiotic. Not that you should really take the probiotic uh, twice in a day, but um, I wanna see. I wanna see if blood glucose is gonna change. Probably should be testing ketones, but I don't have ketones for right now. So it's 10, 11, and I'm gonna record a new event um, in my Super Sapiens app that we are starting the prebiotic. We need one scoop, five grams. Gotta get more water to get that out. But anyways, we'll check back in an hour. All right, so we had a full hour with the SFI prebiotic, which has three different prebiotics in it. It's five grams of carbs, four of which are coming from fiber, and it made no real difference in um, my glucose. It pretty much stayed right around like 71 to 73. Uh, the glucose stability, which is pretty much like a measure of those variants, was one. For most people, normal rest is 10 to 12. So um, if we look at this, um, the, I will have it right in the middle of the screen. We can see right dead, pretty much flat. So not that I'd recommend this, but we're gonna retest the megasporbiotic that kind of spiked this morning. Uh, I'm gonna do it the same day. Probably not a good idea to take four capsules a day, but I'm gonna do it. Um, for those interested, I did take four of the natokinase. I do usually do that when I'm fasting to help with boosting autophagy. Uh, it's been shown to help people with fibrosis and um, scar tissue, all kinds of things. Good research behind it. So I take that to boost that autophagy process whenever I'm doing a fast, uh, especially one that's a longer fast. So let's take two more of the megasporbiotic. I'm gonna set the event in my Super Sapiens app. We're gonna try this over an hour and we're gonna see. It was it just kind of because I was getting ready this morning, kids were a little crazy, or does a probiotic, especially maybe the um, sporbiotic, does that cause some changes in blood glucose? So uh, we may have to look at seeing some other different types of probiotics in the future to see, is it this one particular? Is it just probiotics in general? Um, but my hope is that it doesn't because if you're trying to heal your gut and you can have some probiotics and prebiotics while you're fasting, it can really help uh, crowd out some of that bad bacteria, boost your good bacteria, heal your gut and make you feel better. All right, so it's now been a little bit over an hour, almost an hour and 20 minutes since the last time I took two more of the Megas probiotic. Now this morning when I took it around 7 a.m., uh, it did show a little bit of a spike, just a small amount. And that may have been due to morning cortisol, also kids causing a stressful event. Um, together, cortisol usually causes an increase in glucose. So there's a good chance that that may have been the cause. So I wanted to retest things. And now that it's been over an hour, I can see that um, if we look at this, it pretty much stayed flat. And looking exactly at the event log, the glucose stability was two milligrams, uh, as I said before, about 10 to 12 milligrams is normal during resting, the bottle fluctuation. The average glucose was 69 milligrams per deciliter. And if we look at the summary, the graph right in the middle, you can see it was pretty flat, kind of rose up a little bit towards the end, about a half hour, 45 minutes into that session. But for the most part, it stayed, you know, give or take about two points about 69 to 71 or 72. So the last test that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do straight inulin. Why well, I'm gonna do inulin? Because it is five calories, but only half of those are fiber. So I'm gonna give about two and a half uh, carbs that are not fiber. So we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna measure it and look at it over the course of an hour. And we'll see exactly. Do probiotics and prebiotics break the fast? 
think our data is looking pretty good so far. But if you look at anything we've got, maybe a good way to go. All right, timer set. Let's see how this looks in an hour. All right, in our final test with pure inulin, we saw no change in glucose, once again showing a small amount of non-digestible fiber is unlikely to break your fast. So the results from today show exactly what our team of dietitians suggested to me when I met with them about this challenge, which is that prebiotics and probiotics do not break a fast, especially if you're not seeing any change in glucose levels. In four of the five tests that we saw, no change. The one that did have a change was likely because it was done first thing in the morning when cortisol levels are rising and because of a little bit of a stressor from the kiddos. In the future, we can make this test, take it a little bit further by maybe using some ketone strips. Uh, and we could also maybe switch around and try more different types of probiotics or prebiotics. Uh, the probiotic we used in this test was from Microbiome Labs called Megasporbiotic, which is a pure spore-based broad spectrum probiotic shown to help improve the gut barrier. Because of my issues in the past with uh, mold illness, brain fog, and being a distance runner, I like something that really helps keep my gut barrier strong. We use two different prebiotics, uh, but our favorite is Biotagen by SFI, which used to be known as Clear Labs. We love that because it has three different types of prebiotics in there, which can support and feed different types of good gut bugs in your gut. If you'd like to buy any of these supplements, you can buy them for a discounted price through our Fullscript affiliate link, which is in the show notes below. Once you use our affiliate link to create your account, you can purchase any professional grade supplement for a discount. We love Fullscript because it is a distributor that solely does supplements. They're not selling a bunch of other things. They're making sure the supplements go straight from the warehouses at the companies that make them to you. That means that they're not being stored in, in hot warehouses where the purity is lost. It's not gonna be uh, shipped inappropriately. They're gonna be shipped with uh, freezer packs when needed. You're gonna get good quality, no counterfeits, free shipping over 50 bucks, and uh, great customer service. We've been using Fullscript for a long time. All right, now before we get into our six tips to make a prolong faster, smoother, and more effective, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. It's a huge help to our business and help us grow this channel. And if you know someone that might benefit from this video, please share that with them because the more people we can make healthier, the better. All right, so our six tips to make fasting smoother and more effective. Number one is first try to develop metabolic flexibility. What does that mean? Well, your body can use different fuel sources. Some of this is based on our activity levels, eating habits, and DNA. If you perform intermittent fasting once in a while, say you go 14, 16 hours, a couple days a week, or you occasionally have some meals that are more fat and protein heavy, or you occasionally do workouts in a fasted state, your body's gonna be used to using fat as a fuel source. If you're someone that's always having carbs and sugar all day long, your body's gonna struggle to know how to use fat as a fuel. And so when you go into your fast, it's gonna struggle to make that switch from carbs to fat, and it's gonna keep giving you hunger signals to go look for carbs, because the only way we can get carbs is to go consume more carbs, versus fat, our body knows where it can find more fat in our own body. So before you do a long fast, like 48 to 72 hours, slowly develop some metabolic flexibility, do some intermittent fasting, and try to teach your body to burn fat for fuel. It'll make it so much easier. Don't go into a prolonged fast if you're used to being a carb monster. All right, number two, make your last meal low carb. Heading to this fast that I just did, I had turkey and broccoli, which made it much easier going into day one. I didn't wake up hungry, and when the hunger came on, it was mild, it came on slow, and so you're, instead of having hunger that's like this and like this, your hunger kind of comes up, and then it just kind of slowly settles down. So if you can make your last meal before you start a fast, a low-carb, more fat-protein heavy meal, your body will likely be looking for more fat to burn because it's already in the state of burning that. First, if you have carbs, your body's gonna be looking for more carbs for its next meal, which is gonna send you really crazy hunger signals and that's gonna make you pretty miserable until you really get into ketosis probably. All right, tip number three, consume electrolytes. After you get past day one and there is no food or very little stool left in your gut, water will literally run right through you. Like you drink a bunch and 10, 15 minutes later you gotta go to the bathroom. 
So it won't absorb that well. So you have to drink more water than you normally do. But if you add electrolytes, you will absorb more. Also, if you have water, you can flush a lot of electrolytes out. Uh, personally, in the past, notice that if I don't have electrolytes, by day three, my heart rate starts to get funky. Uh, I start to feel almost a little bit of panicky and it goes away when I have electrolytes. I know people that have done five to seven day fasts and they've done water only and they've been fine. But just remember that light water is gonna go right through us. It can also flush out some electrolytes so we can get it in balance. Electrolytes gonna help you retain more of it and it's going to make it uh, much easier on your body. So there's a lot of great uh, electrolytes out there. The unflavored element is a great recommendation. Uh, the watermelon flavor won't break your fast either. Um, so there's a lot of great brands out there. Just look for something if you can that has almost no carbs. Like I said, Element uh, Unflavored is my top pick. Number four, consider supplementing with probiotics and prebiotics. That's what this video is about, but especially if you have gut issues, brain fog, fatigue, frequent bloating, or other health issues, prebiotics and probiotics during a fast can help change that imbalance between the good gut bugs and the bad gut bugs. So we can cause a die off of some of the bad gut bugs. We can crowd out some of that by feeding the good gut bugs with prebiotics. So think about that and something like a proteolytic enzyme or probiotic can actually help boost autophagy process where we're the cellular cleanup. All right, tip number five, dress warm. As you get past about 16, 18 hours of fasting, your metabolism will start to slow down, your body will produce less heat, and you'll likely start to feel a little bit colder. I'm rarely cold, but when I do a fast, I have to bring a sweatshirt or like a nice zip up that I can wear and layer up, which I normally don't have to do. So make it comfortable, make it easy for you to keep going with your fast. Um, don't make it a miserable process more than it is for most people, dress warm. All right, number six, stay busy. If you're on the go all the time and you keep moving, you have all kinds of projects, it's so much easier to not think about uh, your eating or the hunger cues that you get. Try to get busy. All right, now what happens if you're still having issues with fasting, health issues? Get one-on-one -on -one help from us. We offer virtual coaching. We have three expert dietitians on our team. And we have a link to our coaching packages in the show notes below. And there is also a link once you go there that you can book a free 15 minute phone call to map out a strategy to overcome your health issues. And we'd be happy to help. Check out our Google reviews. We have had so much success with our clients. Lastly, don't let some people call fasting dirty if you add some supplements or you wanna have some ashwagandha to help decrease the stress response. The main thing is that fasting improves health and lifespan no matter how you do it. Harvard researcher and longevity expert David Sinclair starts his day every day with yogurt and fast until dinner. So is that really a fast? You know, his thing is that he would say, and what the research would suggest is that as long as you regularly spend some time hungry, you'll stimulate the cellular signals that help us live longer from fasting, the autophagy and the better blood glucose. So just make sure you spend some time hungry. It doesn't always have to be you know, a clean or dirty fast. Don't get too dogmatic about it. Skip days if you're sick or you're having a good workout. So just be smart about it. Personally, I do an 18 to 24 hour fast about twice a week, sometimes once depending on how I'm feeling or my training that week. And then I do a three to five day fast, usually a week or two before Christmas. Always remember that this is just for information purposes only. If you start doing some fasting, do it only in the presence of a healthcare professional. That's all for now. Thanks for tuning in. Do some fasting to boost your health and longevity. We'll see you soon.